Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon's Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Little choir's on the ball this morning, ain't they? <laughs> yeah, got me kind of bummed for them. This is the second Sunday. This is another day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it. <laughs> we want to be three of us up this morning. Young Caleb is going to be up. He's just a uh, trainee. Uh, with the youth, so he's not going to do anything. He's just observing. But y'all will, y'all will see him later on, and he is going to be very active in the 
Junior, Deacon, Martin. I tell you, let's give God a great big hand praise before we start out this morning. Because he is worthy. He's worthy of all praises. My scripture reading this morning is coming from John 15. And it reads as following. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that, be that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purchased it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are my clean, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branches cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, but it, but he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide, abide in me, and my word abide in you, ye shall ask, and what ye shall what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so shall I love you. Continue in my love. I read you John 15, 1 through 9. May God add a blessing to the hearers, readers, but mostly the doers of his word. Please bow your heads for a few words of prayer. First of all, Heavenly Father, I ask the Lord you forgive me of any sins that I've done, Lord, knowing or unknowing, Lord. Oh, Lord, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. First of all, Heavenly Fathers, we come before you right now, Lord, with bowed heads and humble hearts. Lord, thank you, Lord, for all that you do, all you've done, and all that you will continue to do for us, oh, Lord. And we thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, that you allowed us to open my eyes this morning, Lord. For, Lord, there was someone, oh, Heavenly Father, eyes did not open, oh, Heavenly Father. Lord, there was someone in the emergency room, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, that got bad news. But, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, knowing, oh, Heavenly Father, you, oh, Heavenly Father, is all that we need, oh, Heavenly Father. For, Lord, you will carry us on, oh, Heavenly Father. You will help and guide and strengthen us, oh, Lord. For, Lord, we cannot do this on our own, but we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strength. But, Lord, if we should stumble, and, Lord, if we should fall along the way, Lord, my prayer, Lord, pick us up, push the dead off us, and get, continue to guide us on this journey, Lord. But, Lord, we cannot do it without you. But we can do all things to you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for those right here now, Lord. Lord, those that may be going through something, oh, Heavenly Father, I pray right now, Lord. Lord, lift them up, oh, Heavenly Father. Let them know, oh, Heavenly Father, that they can talk to you, oh, Lord. Lord, guide them, oh, Lord. That is reading is so important that we do intercessory prayer. Let us pray for one another. Let us help one another. If we see someone down, offer a helping hand, oh, Heavenly Father. Let us not walk back as if we didn't see what was going on, oh, Lord. But, Lord, continue to just bless God and strengthen us, oh, Heavenly Father. Lord, give us a mind and a heart to serve thee. For you told us your word, Lord, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Neither would you see your seed baking bread. And you told us to cast our cares. Not to pick cares. Or the past to give you the ones we thought you could handle, but give you all of them, oh, Heavenly Father. For you care for us, oh, Lord. And I pray for, Lord, everyone here, Lord. I pray for, Lord, those that are on their way, Lord. I pray for those that are out there, Lord, in Facebook and TV land, Lord. I pray, Lord, that something might be said or done to touch the hearts of those ones, Lord. And that someone may come running, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And all I have to do is to confess with his mouth, believe in his heart, that Jesus died. And thou shall be saved, Lord. They didn't say that might. They said thou shall be. 
And for this, Lord, we just want to say thank you. These blessings and all others I pray in your darling son's name. Amen. Church, say amen. Say amen again. Amen. If you're excited about Jesus, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. We thank the Lord for another second Sunday. Amen. It is Youth Sunday this morning. Amen. So our young people will be participating in the service on today. We praise and thank God for them. Amen. And let's pray for them. Amen. As they Allow the Lord to use them on this day. Amen. It's prayer time. Amen. We know that we all stand in the need of prayer. Amen. And this morning we want to uh, be mindful of those who are less fortunate than we are. We want to be praying for the sick and shut in all across this land and country. 
Um, we most definitely want to be praying for uh, the families of the victims of the earthquake overseas. Uh, thousands of people have lost their lives. Yeah. Amen. Uh, we want to be praying for them, as I often say. Uh, the things that we see on the news and other places around the world could very well have taken place right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, so we want to be praying for them and be thankful that the Lord has kept us and allowed us to see another day. Amen. So at this time, Reverend Brandon Wilson is going to intercede for us. Amen. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for us. Amen. At this time, Reverend Wilson. Good morning, Brother Rose. Before I pray, let us think of those that we don't know. Think of those that we do know, because everybody is going to do something. And when we pray, let's let's be real when we pray, because what comes out the heart shall reach the heart. And let us not focus on the problem. Let us focus on the problem solver. Let us pray. Father God, before I ask you for anything, I want to thank you for everything. Before I ask you for the big things, I want to thank you for the small things. Before I ask you for the big blessings, I want to thank you for the small blessings. Father God, thank you for blessing us with two gifts and that will be our eyes so we can see a brand new day that you have created, Father God. Father, I want to say thank you for another two gifts and that will be our hands so we can touch the world that you have made, Father God. Father God, I want to say thank you for our legs, Father God, so we continue to walk on this earth that you have created, Father God. And not only that, Father God, I want to say thank you for our minds so we can have a choice so we can believe in you, Father God. Father God, I want to say thank you for waking us up this morning songs with a brand new day that we will never see again, Father God. Thank you for everybody that's in it, Father God. I want to say thank you for not only opening our eyes, Father God, but letting us have a clear state of mind, Father God. Father God, I want to say thank you for last night's rest, Father God, because somebody didn't wake up this morning, Father God. They went home to you, Father God. Father God, I pray, Father God, I want to say thank you for allowing us to get up off our bed, Father God, to come to the house, Father God. I want to say thank you that you have delivered us, Father God, from the road to the church, Father God, safely, Father God. Father God, I want to say thank you for every person inside this church and those who's out of it, Father God. So, Lord, I want to say thank you for the hearts, Father God. I want to say thank you for the minds, souls, Father God. I want to say thank you for making us us, Father God. I want to say thank you for you being you, Father God. I want to say thank you for all the sacrifices you gave, Father God. I want to say thank you for all the things you have did for us, Father God. Lord, if I had 10,000 tongues, 100,000 tongues, none of them would be enough to say thank you for all the blessings you have been doing in my life, Father God. Father God, I want to say thank you for continuing to work in my life, Father God, and everybody else's life, Father God. Because if we look back over our lives, Father God, and see where we were and look at where we are now, Father God, we have no problem but to tell you thank you, Father God. Thank you for another Sunday service, Father God. I want to say thank you for bringing us to the house once again, Father God. I want to say thank you for giving us another chance, Father God. Lord, because you are a God of multiple chances, Father God. You gave us more than two chances, Father God. And I want to say thank you for that, Father God. Lord, I want to say thank you for being the healer that you are, being the forgiver that you are, Father God. You being you, Father God, is what makes our lives better, Father God. Lord, I want to say thank you for all the work you've been doing in our lives, Father God, because we are not the same like we used to be, Father God. We're not the same like we were, Father God. We are different people, Father God. I want to say thank you for salvation, Father God, and the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross on the Friday, Father God. Thank you for what happened on that Friday, Father God. But it was 33 years before, Father God, that you sent your son, Father God, on a nine-month train, Father God, as and a baby, Father God, I want to say thank you for the baby that you gave, Father God. I want to say thank you for the blessings that you have been giving us, Father God. And Lord, I want to say thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Father God. Thank you for what he did on Calvary, Father God. Thank you for the blood that was shed, Father God. The blood is still running warm, Father God. Father God, I want to say thank you for not only the blood that was shed, Father God, but every single thing that was done to him on that day, Father God. 
I want to say thank you for the piercing in the side, Father God. I want to say thank you for the nails in his hands, Father God. I want to say thank you for the nails in his feet, Father God. I want to say thank you for the crown of thorns on his head, Father God. I want to say thank you for all the punishment that you did, because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be here today, Father God. Lord, I want to say thank you for everything that you've been doing, Father God. And let us not forget that three days later, Father God, because it was on the early Sunday morning that he rose with all power in his hands, Father God. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow, Father God. I want to say thank you because the mission, the job is not done yet. He's going to prepare a place for us, Father God. And he's going to come back. And he's going to bring us to our heavenly home, Father God. I want to say thank you for every single thing, Father God. Thank you for salvation, Father God. Thank you for forgiveness, Father God. Thank you for every single thing that you're doing, Father God. You're still doing stuff to this day, Father God. I pray all of this, Father God. Your daughter and son, in Jesus' name, amen. If you know God's been good to you, stand up. Stand up. Hey, if you know God's been good to you, stand up. Stand up. Whoa. If you know God's been good to you, stand up. Stand up. Why don't you stand?
Amen. Come on, let's give our youth a, a hand. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for our praise team, our youth praise team on today. Amen. Our young people could be involved in so many other things. And that they are not ashamed to show up at church and worship and praise their Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Just a quick few points of emphasis this morning. Um, this is Black History Month, and our young people will be uh, blessing us with uh, moments in black history. Amen. And if we don't know our history, uh, we are failing to uh, be empowered by some of the things that those of African-American descent have made an impact uh, on uh, the world, and there are some things that we can learn. Uh, we need to be informed. We need to be inspired. Amen. I believe, of course, uh, there's more uh, than one month of the year that we should recognize, observe black history, but amen. So we'll uh, be inspired this month by our youth uh, with sharing a moment in black history with us. Amen. Also, I want to encourage uh, all of us to consider giving towards the uh, disaster relief uh, concerning the earthquake overseas. Uh, thousands of people have lost their lives. Many have been displaced. Um, I'm going to lead by example and uh, go on to give a fly app and give $100. Uh, I believe that every little bit helps they're going to need some help for a long time. Uh, and as Christians, you've heard me say it before, we can't serve God without serving people. So we need to do, do what we can uh, to be a blessing uh, to those who are less fortunate than we are. Um, the church does support uh, the Red Cross. We, we give uh, uh, an amount to the uh, Red Cross. We trust uh, their reputation as far as uh, helping those in need. Uh, so if you would like to give here at the church and make note that it's for disaster relief, or you could just give to the Red Cross uh, on, on their site. But we just want to do something uh, to be a blessing to those who are standing in need. Amen? Amen. All right, at this time, um, we're going to install our offices for 2023. And I'm going to ask our associate ministers, our deacons, uh, mission president, youth director, uh, those of you holding a uh, position of leadership, finance committee, if you all would, if you would come and stand down front as we uh, make ready to receive the Lord's blessings for Leaders of 2023, if you would, you all come turn and stand face the pulpit. Amen. Amen. All right, Sunday school teachers. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter four. Verse 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And you all have been chosen for leadership in the church. God does not expect us to be perfect. He expects us to be committed and expects us to be faithful. Leadership in ministry is a serious responsibility. We are all expected to use our gifts and ability to glorify God. So I challenge you uh, all to offer the Lord your best, live faithfully, live a life in Christ, and make him known in your witness and in your work. If you're a preacher, preach the word. If you're a teacher, teach the word. If you're an administrator, serve faithfully behind the scenes. Everyone has been, have been given a gift, a talent, and responsibility. And whatever God has for you to do, just be faithful. He does not expect us to be perfect. 
but he expects us to show up, do his will, and serve him faithfully. So let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Lord, we ask for forgiveness of our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. And now, Father, I pray for these, your people who have been selected and chosen to serve in leadership here at Greater Rose of Sharon. I pray that you would use them for your glory, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would keep them encouraged. We pray that you would empower them to do that what you have called them to do. Because we all, Father God, want to bring glory and honor to your name. So, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Strengthen them, give them boldness, courage, and continue to walk with them as they do that which you have called us to do. Lord, we love you. We thank you and bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would, if you would turn and face the congregation. Amen. Greater Rose of Sharon, I present to you your 2023 leaders of Greater Rose of Sharon ministry. Y'all give them a hand. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. And amen. At this time, we're going to continue to worship through giving. Amen. And I'm if you like me, you're just happy to have something to give. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we are going to yield the floor over to our officers. What time is it? It's giving time, and God tells us why we should give and how we should give. In Malachi 3 and 10, God tells us to bring the tithe to the storehouse that his house may have meat. Simply put, that means pay your tithes to support the church. And when you support the church, you're not only helping the church, but you're helping others through the church ministries. Not only that, you will be blessed for God also say in Malachi 3 and 10 that if you give the way he say give, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Don't you want to see the church blessed? Don't you want to be blessed? You can accomplish both by giving. Now to give to this great ministry, simply download the GiveLify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create that account. Enter the place of worship. Enter the amount you wish to give. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Give Lify app, you can mail your tithes, your offering, or any donation to Greater Rose of Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. Again, that's Greater Rose of Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying God bless you and keep you is my prayer. This, thank you. 
this um, theme was selected so you can know that you don't have to be a, a Rosa Parks or a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Sojourner Truth in order to make a difference within your community. So the people that we are going to, we are going to highlight on today, they have made their own contributions in their own special way within their community and their family. Black History Month is an ideal opportunity to pay tribute to the many important contributions. The black community has made national, nationally and locally, loca locally. Today we will pay tribute to some of our, some of our very own Greta Rose insp inspirational people in Christ. The first awardee is an inspirational person who traded his street shoes for his church shoes when he decided to accept God-given calling to be a mouthpiece for the Lord in the year of 2016. He has left a lasting impression on his children, who are youth. Here's some things that his children have said about him. He showed me that people will make time for you when they really care. My dad has taught me to never give up on my dream and that whatever I want to do or be, I can be it. My father has taught me many things in life. One good thing is to value your friends and family, and family is very important, and to always have my family's back. Another good thing my dad has taught me is to go for your dreams no matter what obstacles may hold you back. My dad has taught me many things in life. One thing I remember is to put family first and always have your family back no matter what. And another thing is no matter what, no matter the bad things that happen, we should always stick together. Amen. Along with being a minister for our church, he is a licensed funeral director. This inspirational person is the son of Deacon Horatius and Gloria Williams, the husband to Sister Candace Williams, and the father to Jalen, Michaela, Kamari, and Mackenzie, right. Minister Maurice Williams. <laughs> to be reckoned with. We know he doesn't say a whole lot. He smiles a lot, but he is about his business. So we're going to present him with this award. It says, Greater Rosa Sharon Youth Department Black History Month Recognition Award. This acknowledges that Minister Maurice Williams is an inspirational person. It takes courage, strength, boldness, and determination to be an inspirational person. Take pride in knowing that you are an inspiration to your family, friends, and church members. you with something if y'all can see before I turn it around let him see <laughs> The second honoree is an inspirational person who accepted his calling to be a minister of the Lord in two, in 2016 as well. He is not only setting records and running for our Savior now, he has set track records at the so Southern, Southern Arkansas University and was inducted into the university's track and field hall of fame. He is the father, of, father and the husband of Cynthia Vaughn, Minister Lee Anthony Vaughn. Mike there. He's also received a certificate as well as a gift from the Amen. youth department. Amen. It's all good. Thank you. Come on, let's give our honorees another hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Like I said, listen, black history doesn't have to be those we read about in the history books. Amen. We have people right here within our congregation. 
Amen. That are having an impact on society. Amen. So we thank God for them on today. Come on, let's give them another hand. Amen. Amen. All right, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for our praise team, our youth, as they come back one more again.
Eternal God, our Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. We bless your name because you are worthy to be praised. Master, we ask for forgiveness of our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. And now, Lord, as I stand to proclaim your good news on this day, Lord, we pray that your word would fall on good ground. We pray, Lord, if there be a sinner in the midst or even watching via Facebook Live, that someone's heart be pricked and someone's life be changed. Lord, we thank you for just being God and being God alone. And Lord, we, we just love you. We praise you and bless your name, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. We give thanks to God the Father and his Son, who was Jesus the Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our guide. As I, I'm sure you would agree with me. I say it's good to be here. You know, there's, there's a lot going on in the world right now. Too much to even try to cover it all. But if there's one thing I am certain of, is that God is in control. Uh, sometimes it looks like things are out of control. But when God is in the midst, we can trust that things are happening according to his divine plan. You know, I was talking with a co-worker and we were sharing some things we had experienced in life. And I told him, I said, you know, nothing is wasted. Everything that we have experienced in life, it has a purpose behind it. There was a lesson taught. There was a blessing received. Uh, everything we've ever experienced, the good, the bad, the indifferent, all of that has helped us to be the people we are right now. See, uh, if you didn't have to go through that storm, uh, you wouldn't have seen God move on your behalf in that storm. You've heard me say it before. If, you, if you've never been sick, you wouldn't know him as a healer. <laughs> right. So there are things we experience in life that God is just taking us through to show us yeah. that he is in control and it all works together for the good of them that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. I don't know who that was for. That's not, that's not the sermon. That, yeah, yeah. I don't know who that was for, but... Somebody needs to know that even though it may be difficult right now, listen, God is just taking you through. And there's a lesson and a blessing once you come out on the other side. Amen. There's a word this morning uh, coming from Matthew chapter 16. And this morning we're going to deal with three verses, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 16, Matthew 16, verses 13 through 16, there's a lot to, that can be covered in this chapter, but we're going to deal with these few verses this morning. Matthew 16, 13 through 16. If you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they say, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Yeah. And Simon Peter answering and said, Thou art the Christ, yeah. the Son of the living God. Yeah. 
I want to preach from the thought this morning. What say ye? What say ye? Let us all say amen. Amen. No matter what the topic of discussion may be, there will always be a difference of opinions. Every individual has their own point of view, their perspective on life. It is the same in religion. There are those who don't believe in God, There are those who don't believe in organized religion. And there are those who believe in a different gospel. Uh, But one who is truly saved has put their faith in Christ Jesus. They believe the Bible. They believe that Christ is the Savior. They believe that he hung, bled, died, and rose again on the third day with all power in his hands. And in our text this morning, this passage of scripture is known as Peter's great confession. And Jesus is having a private conference with the disciples concerning himself. And Peter, being the outspoken disciple that he was, spoke on behalf of all of the twelve. And Jesus begins to examine, if you will, the hearts of his disciples. And he begins with a question to set the stage. He says in verse number 13, Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? He says, who do men say? And now it's been nearly two years since the Lord called his disciples. And now he will uh, survey the responses of the people. Uh, He was was checking, amen, the results of the, the disciples preaching. The disciples had more contact with the people. It was 12 of them. And they were out and about and among the people. And and the Lord is inquiring the opinion of common folks. You see, he knew what the religious leaders thought about him. He didn't ask, what do the scribes and Pharisees say that I, the son of man, am? Uh, They were prejudiced against him in in matter of fact, in this same gospel, Matthew 12, uh, verses 24 and 25, they accused him of casting out devils by the power of Beelzebub. Yeah. So Jesus knew what the religious leaders thought. But, but what, what do everyday common people say about him? Uh, the ministry of Jesus was, was up close and personal. Uh, we know that he healed the sick. He he fed multitudes. Uh, He even walked on water. Uh, And and I have to pivot right here, if you will, to to John 21 and 25, uh, that one verse that should blow every believer's mind when the Bible says, and there were many other things Jesus did. Matter of fact, let me just read it for you. Now, if, if this doesn't stir your soul, I really don't know what will. It it says in John 21 and 25, and there are also many other things which Jesus did. Watch this. The which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. If that don't make you shout, I don't know what will. You see, we read the Gospels and hear about he fed the multitude. We know how he walked on water. We, he raised folks from the dead. But this is just a portion of what Jesus did. 
how I can't even, I really can't even wrap my brain around what else that Christ did while on earth. I mean, man, he walked on water. You know, man, he, he took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed over 5,000 people. And John said, listen, y'all ain't seen that. <laughs> and when you think about how good God is, how good he has been, and how good he will be. When you consider all of that, you would think that when asked who he is, that people would give the right answer. Here in the text, Jesus, he asked the, the common folk, asked his disciples, who, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And in, in spite of all of the preaching and teaching and the miracles that had been done, some still had the wrong confession regarding Christ. And see, we, you and I, we, we can point out things that have happened in our lives that we know that it couldn't be anything but God. But when the disciples were preaching and teaching, they... They were seeing Christ at work at first hand. I mean, they saw him raise folks from the dead. They saw him heal sick folks. The disciples saw him walking on water. They, they heard every sermon preached. They saw every miracle. They went out and they preached and they taught. And people witnessed how the Lord moved, but yet when they were asked the question, yes. whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Verse number 14 says, and they said, some say. Y'all think about it. I'm, I'm going to wear those two words out. I just want to prepare you. Some say. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some, Elias, in others, Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets. Yeah. Some say. Yeah. Some say one thing, uh, and some say another. Yeah. Even in religion today, yeah. some say. Uh, uh, he, he's highly respected and a unique messenger. Right. Talking about Jesus. Some say uh, yeah. there is no such thing as the Trinity. Some say he was not crucified. Some say that he was not risen from the grave. Some say he was a good man, uh, like many of the other prophets. But brothers and sisters, Jesus was more than a good man. He is the Savior of the world. He is the sacrificial lamb of God who came to save the world from their sin. That was a good place for you to shout right there. Because so many people have their various opinions of who Christ is. Some say. But it is it is possible, watch this now, to speak well of him without reverencing him for who he is. Because when you see it in the text, and they said, some say thou art John the Baptist. Well, John the Baptist was a good man. Some say Elijah. Elijah was a good man. Some say Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a good man. But they have put Jesus in the same category as minor prophets, minor and major prophets. They see Jesus as just a teacher. He was a, just a unique messenger. Listen, there's more to Christ than him being a good man, a good teacher, a good person. When we do not acknowledge him as the savior of the world, that, that does not acknowledge his true deity. There are religions among us that don't recognize him as the son of God. There's some that don't believe 
in the Trinity. And the, the easiest way to argue that point is to just to go to the first book of the Bible. Some people are looking for deep theology. It stands right there and it jumps out. In the beginning, God. And then he goes on to say, let us make man in our own image. Let us, let us. Hmm, okay. Well, who, who, who is he talking about when he says us? Keep in mind, he has not created Adam. He has not birthed Eve. The only person in existence at the time is God. Let us make man in our own image. He had to be talking to himself about himself. If you go to the book of Colossians, I believe it's the book of Colossians, when he said that everything that was made, it was made for him and by him. So the Bible, there are some things that are obscure in Scripture. But then there are some things that jump right out at you. Simple enough for a child to understand. And seeing that the people in the text, they had various opinions of who Christ was. But then notice how Jesus turns the table. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? So he's heard the various opinions of the people out in, in the community, out in the world. But he really wasn't concerned with what the people were saying. He wanted to know the 12 men that he was about to leave the responsibility in their hands to proclaim the good news. He is on his way to Calvary. He knows he is about to step on a cloud and go back to the Father, and he will leave the spreading of the gospel to these men. So before he leaves them with this responsibility, he wants to know, what say ye? I've heard what the people say. I already know what the religious leaders think. Yeah. But you, you, you men who have been hanging with me for the past two years, the, 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 you men who have, have ate with me, we slept at the same time, we, we broke bread together. Yeah. Yeah. Those of you who have been rubbing elbows with me all of this time, what say ye? I know what they say. I know what some say. But what do you say? And brothers and sisters, I'm asking you the question this morning. What say ye? If someone were to ask you, who is Jesus? What say ye? When someone asks you, is he the savior of the world or is he just a good man? What say ye? When someone asks you, what's the purpose? What's, what is the What's the whole meaning of it all? What, what is the point in praying? What is the pr purpose of going to church? What's the, what's the real reason? What say ye? Because if you are living out your Christian life, there's going to come a chance, come an opportunity for you to share your faith. Someone's going to ask you, why should I put my faith in God? Why should I believe in Jesus? Somebody's going to ask you that. Someone will confront you about your faith. Saying that, why would you believe in a God you can't see? So, someone will call you out. So the question is, what say ye? These men had been preaching. They had been teaching. They gave the response of people. But Jesus didn't really want to know what people thought. He wanted to know what the men who followed him, what do you say? And those of us, brothers and sisters, that follow Christ, the question is on the table this morning. What do you say? You see, we must know, brothers and sisters, what we believe. Now, the men that they compared him to, they were good men. But they did not compare to Jesus as Christ. 
Jeremiah did not hang on a cross. John the Baptist was not pierced in the side. Elijah did not die and was raised again on the third day. Although they had an impact in the capacity that they served, but they were not as good as Jesus. And brothers and sisters, a misunderstanding of who Jesus is is dangerous and misleading. This can cause people to be misled. The wrong view of who he is will lead the wrong view of everything else in the word of God and in the gospel message. We must have the right view of who Christ is. So I ask you, what do you believe? I, sometimes we have to pause, take a good look in the mirror, and ask ourselves, do, do we really believe? The reason why is because we are, we are finite creatures. And if you got one preacher telling you that Jesus is the way, and you got a thousand other YouTube videos and TikTok videos telling you that this is the way, that's the way, you, we're being bombarded with information. And the thing is, and this is just the truth. We don't plug into our church as often as we plug into our YouTube and social media networks. Some of us stay on YouTube, stay on TikTok, and we take in the information. And if we're not careful, because if you start to hear different things from so many different people, if you're not careful, you'll question whether or not that the simple preaching of the gospel is the way. Because, see, we have people uh, that are well-respected. Some of you all love Oprah Winfrey. But she says that there are more than one way to get to God. Now, we're not trying to call folks out. Well, let me take that back. Yes, we are trying to call folks out. Because misleading people, because there are people who are earnestly seeking Christ and trying to figure this thing out. There are people who really want to know what's the direction to take. And it would seem as if, though, just putting your faith in Christ isn't enough. And there are people out here that are teaching that very thing. So brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that we know. You need to be sure about your faith. Young people, if you're a young Christian, you most definitely need to know. Have your mind made up? Because in school there are so many things, so many causes, so many movements that are, that are leading people Astray, you need to know for sure, as we used to say out in the world, you got to be ten toes down, standing, flat foot, standing on God, because there's so much out here. And when you look, now listen, there wasn't as much going on in this day, in the Bible days, as it is now. Even then, people had differences of opinion of who Christ is. So Christ, keeping in mind, he knew he was about to leave the responsibility of spreading the good news. He knew he was going to leave it in the hands of his disciples. So he asked them the question, whom say ye that I am? And Peter said, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Brothers and sisters, as much as we have learned about Peter, one thing that he did do when asked a question, he got that right. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He didn't say, Thou art a Christ. He says, thou art the Christ. And we 
brothers and sisters, make, we must make sure that we are not just guilty of attending service and being in the presence of God's people, hearing the gospel preached, and we have yet to make a decision to surrender our life to Christ. Brothers and sisters, it's possible, very possible, to attend church your whole life and have never truly surrendered your heart to Christ. It's very possible to sit on the Bible teaching, Bible preaching, and still be skeptical if this is the truth or not. If you are confronted and put under pressure, what will you say concerning your Lord and Savior? You see, you, you may not have had that experience, but in the event that you do, what say ye? Listen, some of you all may have seen, especially here around Little Rock, the uh, black uh, Hebrew Israelites. So they all over. They, they have been set up on the corner right here. And they are adamant about their message. And, and the reason I just called them out is, is because I've seen them locally right in a few blocks from this particular building. So in the event that you were ever to cross paths with, the, with, the, with someone from the Muslim faith, the, the black Hebrew Israelites, uh, the Mormons, the, the two young men who ride the bicycles up down the neighborhood, you know, if you were to cross paths with these people who are preaching what they believe to be the truth. It was mentioned in Sunday school this morning that, that there are several religions that have, they take certain pieces of the Bible and they build upon that. What, what, what will you do, Lord have mercy, what will you do when the Jehovah Witnesses come to your house? I mentioned us crossing paths with people, but sometimes they will show up at your front door. What say ye? And the thing is, there's this, they're so nice. You know, they're, they're good people. That, yeah. Right, genuine people, and they really believe what they believe. And they will come to your front door to share the watchtower with you. So the question, brothers and sisters, when this happens, what is your response? Matter of fact, I I I welcome the Jehovah Witness to my house. As a matter of fact, a few years ago when I was working during the day, uh, they came to the house. Robin let me know they're coming. They came. I said, well, okay. Uh, the next time they come, tell them to come back when your husband's home. Yeah. Because, listen, we, we're not here to fight with anyone. But if they come to a Christian's house, you ought to be able to lovingly share with them the truth of the gospel. And the thing is, brothers and sisters, there are people out here and some within our families and in the congregation who they're just kind of on the fence. Is Jesus the way or not? That is why we must have the same confession Peter had. Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, Peter had his ways, but one thing about Peter, he was convinced. Yes. Now, he, once again, he, he had his errors, like you and I, yes. but he never turned his back totally on Christ. Right. Now, he did follow from a distance. Yes. Yeah, we, we talked about that. He, he did follow from a distance. Yes. <laughs> he, he, he social distance. But he never just turned his back totally on, gospel, on the gospel. And brothers and sisters, you and I, we've got to know. Because we are living in a world with so much information, so much false doctrine, so many false teachers. 
You have got to know where you stand spiritually. Jesus never acknowledged what the men said about him. But he asked his disciples, what say he? And this question, brothers and sisters, we must have the correct answer to. You see, the answer, the correct answer to this question has eternal significance. If any person goes through this life thinking Jesus is anything less than the Savior of the world, he has been deceived and is headed for eternal destruction. That is why it says in the book of Romans, Romans 10, and I begin in verse 8, where it says, What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Paul summarizes it all in verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, you, can't, you cannot call on Buddha. You cannot call on Mohammed. You can not call on Zoroaster or any of these man-made gods. But when you call upon the name of Jesus, <laughs> he is the savior of the world. When you call on Jesus and repent of your sins, when you call on Jesus, he will save you from your sin. <laughs> he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the light. Amen. Listen, we must know the answer, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Peter stepped up and said, Thou art the Christ. <laughs> Jesus asked, What do you say? Yeah. And greater Rose, what do you say? Yeah. When, when, you, when you get confronted yeah. about your faith, yeah. will you stand? And boldly claim Christ as your redeemer. Will you boldly claim that you are one of the Christ ones? Will you boldly claim to be a member of the body of Christ? We're in that day where our faith is being tested. And brothers and sisters, you got to stand boldly. Some of us are praying that God will bless us financially. We're praying for the house, yeah. praying for the car. What we ought to be praying for yeah. Yeah. is boldness, right. praying for courage, yeah. praying that we would be faithful witnesses of our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Because one day you're going to be challenged. One day you're going to be tested. Don't you turn and run yeah. when confronted about your faith. Jesus has been good to it. Listen, he has done so much for us. Why wouldn't you be bold for him? Listen, that's the sermon right there. That's it. We must be prepared to give an answer. People are going to call you out. People will, they'll gang up on you. Sometimes you, sometimes you will own you, you'll be the only one standing. There will be other believers that don't necessarily have that courage and they will not stand with you. But you got to be bold. You got to be bold. You got to. And being bold is not being arrogant, but it's being confident. I'm not here to challenge every other religion and every other preacher and every other teacher, but I stand on the fact that Christ is the way. 
And if I got to get my head busted because of it, so be it. But we have got to be bold witnesses for Christ. He did say, and I'm done. He did say, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. Father, we come now at the close of this sermon. We thank you for your word. We pray, Father God, that you would help us to give the right answer when we are asked about our faith. Father, we pray for boldness. We pray for courage. Father, we pray that we would be bold witnesses for you. Lord God, we pray that you would help us not to be discouraged or shy away when someone challenges us about our faith in you. Give us the boldness, Father God, the confidence to stand on your word that you are the true and living God. Father, we pray for those who are under false teaching. We pray for those who are under false religions. We pray that somehow, some way that the gospel message would reach their, heart, reach their hearts and that they would surrender their life to you. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. There may, there may be one here this morning who does not know the Lord due to the pardon of your sins. You've never surrendered your life to Christ. Today is a good day. Don't put off until tomorrow what you can do right now. You can come by letter of Christian experience or a candidate for baptism. If you're here now and you feel the Spirit of God speaking to your heart, don't put off another day which you can do right now. Would there be one today? father's house. Amen. Come on, let's give our Lord and Savior a big hand clap of praise. Amen. We praise and thank him just for being God and being God alone. Amen. At this time, Sister Kariba Williams, do you have anything you want to share? Amen. Come on, y'all. Praise God for Anaya Cross. Amen. Good, mo good morning. Um, our youth announcement. Um, we had a great time on Friday, February 3rd, 2023, at our annual youth lock-in. We ate, played games, and stayed up late. We split into groups, boys and girls, and had a godly discussion about life and its choices. We received hygiene bags. Thank you all. To, thank you to all the youth who participated and invited their friends. Thank you to the youth adults who assisted to make these activities happen. We've had several high school high school seniors. When I call your name, please stand where you are. Braylon Wilson, Will Howe, Shana Cross, and Sabrina Batty. We will celebrate them. 
We will celebrate them on second Sunday in April. You are welcome to bless them on this day with gifts, prayers, encouraging words, or whatever the Lord places on your heart. Be on the lookout for their cash app handle soon. The following youth, the following, oh, y'all may be seated. <laughs> the following youth may unenroll or emeritus list for the second nine weeks at their school. When I call your name, please stand to be recognized. Sister Campbell, Sister Kariba will bless you later for success. Kylie Williams, Will Howe, Braylon Wilson, Brandon Wilson, Brit Brittany Wilson, and, McKiz and Mackenzie Williams. Y'all may be seated. Thank you to all the youth who, who have volunteered to make our youth day success. We invite all the youth to come out to Great Rose of Sharon on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock for Bible study and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. Thank you all, Sister Kariba, Youth Director. Amen. We thank God for our young people that are doing their best in school. Listen, and let me talk on behalf of the C student because your pastor was the C student. <laughs> now, just because you didn't make the honor roll, it doesn't mean you're not learning. So whether you, so if you, if you, if you just do your best, that's what your parents expect your best. Now, if your best is straight A's, you need to make those straight A's. Yeah. But if your best is C's, do your best. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, what you're learning will be a blessing to you later on down the road, regardless of what the report card says. So just do your best. Your pastor, your parents, we don't expect anything more than your best. So just give it all you got. If you got all C's like your pastor, praise God. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for our youth director, youth workers, young people. Just keep God first. Do your best, and God's going to get the glory out your life. Amen. Let's all stand. Master, we come at the close of this worship service to say thank you. We bless your name, Lord, because you are worthy of all praise. And Lord, as we leave this place with never your presence, we pray that you would give us traveling grace. We pray, Father God, that you would continue to lead God and direct our path. And we will be mindful to give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.